Hello and welcome. In this video we're going to discuss how to build dashboards, how to reorganize them, and how to ultimately share them. To begin, we need to first start by either accessing a dashboard or creating a new one. In this case, we'll start by creating a new one, and I'll do that from the Views drop-down tab. If you'll notice along the top right here, I have this option, New Dashboard. If I click in there, the first thing I need to do is name my dashboard. So in this case, we'll call it Video Demo Dash. We can add a description if we'd like. And then very importantly, we need to decide the folder that this dashboard is going to live in. Now, in this case, I want it to reside within the public folder, so I'll select that from the list. Now, when I click Create, when I go back to that public folder and scroll all the way down to the bottom, I will see that video demo dash that I created. So now I'll click into it to access it. We haven't built anything yet or saved any queries to it, so it's going to be empty. And we've got these links we can use to start building out queries, but in this case, for the demo's sake, I'm going to cheat and access a query that I've already built and just save it to my dashboard. Now to do that, from the query that you've built that you want to save, if you look in the top right hand corner, you'll see the save as new link. If I click there, I have two options. I can either save it as a bookmark, so literally along the top of my web browser for easy access, or I can save it as a widget to a dash. I'll select the widget option, and then I need to select the dashboard that I want to save it to. So again, remember this lives within our public folder and it's called video demo dash. So I will save it there. And now two different ways I can get back to it. So right away in the top left hand corner of this widget that I've saved or this query that I've saved, I'll have now a link directly bringing me back to the dashboard I just saved it to. Or again, we can access it via that views drop down tab, public folder, all the way at the bottom. And now I've got my new widget saved to the dashboard. Now to show you how to begin manipulating and organizing these widgets once you've added quite a few, I'm gonna hop over to a dashboard that we've already built under the public folder here. It's this demo dashboard. And you can see we've got all kinds of widgets now saved and built, all kinds of queries that we've ran. As you start to save more and more, organizing them becomes more and more important. So the first thing that we can do is we can alter the shapes and sizes of any of these simply by clicking in the bottom right hand corner. I can then reshape and resize them to whatever size I need them to be for it to make sense as I built out this dashboard. We can also reorganize them. So if I click in the top bar of any of these widgets, I can then click and drag and reorganize how these are all laid out. So if I just wanna switch what side both of these segmentation queries are on, I can. And we'll just open this up so it fits nice and neat. In the top right hand corner of all of your widgets, you'll have a little ellipses. If you click into that, you'll get a few different options so we can open the query to begin editing it and manipulating it. We can edit any notes that have been attached to it. And then more importantly, down here at the bottom, we can move it around, duplicate it or delete it. Now, if you built a dashboard that you really like and you want to share with other people, there's a couple of things we need to do. So the first thing we can do is we can decide whether or not we want to share this outside of our organization. To do that, I need to turn public sharing on, which can be done from the settings menu. Okay, so I can either click public sharing off to access that settings menu or all the way in the top right next to that manage link. If I scroll down to dashboard settings here uh, at the bottom is where I have the option to enable public access. So I'll click that to turn sharing on. But if we start at the top and work our way down, here we have the ability to change the name of my dashboard, add a description if we'd like to, and then we've got a few different tools here that we can use to alter how we manipulate this. So the first is widget layout flow. Now this little question mark is going to show me that free flow allows us to position the widgets anywhere on the dashboard. Auto flow will vertically compact widgets to the top of the dashboard. Essentially meaning auto flow is there to help guide you and place widgets in a way that aligns neatly with other widgets. We can organize the dashboard as the screen view that we're currently seeing it, or we can alter to a print mode where it's going to compact everything down to show you what it would look like were you to print it out on a 9 by 11 sheet of paper. We can still change the size and reorganize how these widgets are laid out from within print mode, but just pay special attention to the page breaks and make sure that your widgets won't be cut off or shaped or missing any information because it's going to have some of its contents overlapping that page break. So just pay special attention to that. We've also got this option to turn on what we call widget color matching. Now the easiest way to explain this is that it will synchronize the colors of identical series across all widgets on the dashboard. 
So it's going to make sure that any events that are represented on multiple widgets are going to be displayed in the same color. So you'll be able to quickly identify what they are just based on the color alone. And you can turn that on or off here. Now, if you want to create a regularly scheduled report, what we'll do is head up to this report link here and click on new scheduled report. Now, it is important to note that you do have to be in print mode for this. So if you are not already in print mode, you'll get a little pop-up warning. Don't worry, just click on the pop-up that says enable print mode and then you'll be right here with us now. We need to title our report and then decide the cadence that we want it to go out. So daily, weekly, monthly, by day or by date. And then we need to select all of the email addresses of the recipients that we'd like to get this. If you send this dashboard to a non-indicative user, they're going to get a link to a read-only version of the dashboard where they will not be able to manipulate it in any way or access the widgets. They would just be able to see the dashboard as you've built it. If you send this to indicative using team members, you'll be able to decide whether or not they have editing privileges. So if you'd like them to be able to edit it, leave it set at team. If you would not like them to be able to edit it, switch it to person. You can then click save and that report will go out at the cadence that you selected. For now, Happy analyzing.